Uh, good afternoon. My name is Jaime Penagos. I'm from Colombia. Uh, I worked with Jean-Pierre Charlambos. He couldn't make it uh, this year to Wikimania, so I'm going to tell you what we did. Uh, the proposal title was what well, is uh, framework to visualize Wikibase transclusions. Uh, we belong to a research group in the National University of Colombia. The research group is called Remix Lab. Basically, what we what did we do? Um, we did a media wiki extension for uh, uh, for creating a unique ID transclusions. Uh, and to visualization metaphors that uh, enhance the process visually. Uh, the visualization are a section transclusion helper and uh, one we call Universe Wikipedia with visualization. Uh, here are some snapshots of what we did. This is the, the media wiki extension. Uh, and these are the, the snapshots of the, the visualization. The current status of this project, uh, well, this project is uh, currently being developed and uh, being tested in, uh, for now, uh, a local installation of MediaWiki. Uh, the visual metaphors are uh, currently being integrated to the extension core because some compatibility issues. I'll explain to you that later. Well, here's, here's the outline of the, of the talk. I'm going to give you a brief introduction of what is transclusions and what are transclusions built in MediaWiki. Uh, then I will talk about the media, media wiki extension we developed and uh, about the visual metaphors we did. Uh, well, a transclusion is um, inclusion of a document of part of, part of it. Um, we will call the the document that is being transcluded uh, the source document and the document when the transclusion uh, arrives, uh, the target document. Uh, this has some advantage. If you update the source doc a, a, a source document, um, the target document will be updated. This concept was introduced formally in 1982 by Ted Nelson. The term first appeared in a document he did in the 60s, but formally the transclusion term was introduced in 1982. Uh, the idea of, of that was that um, uh, he wanted to fix the electronic literature. Uh, he designed that to, to avoid copyright issues in, in that in that times copyright issues between documents and uh, to keep all the documents up to date if, if one of them changed uh, a formal project he released a few years ago was Xanadu uh, here you can see the a little snapshot these are the documents and the colored sections are uh, being transcluded for from different documents. In MediaWiki, the transclusion is made by the use of three main tags. Uh, those are the tag no include, include only, and only include. The difference between them is that uh, some some of these tags uh, renders the text on the source document, but not in the target document. Uh, the other one uh, renders the text uh, in the target document, not in the in the source document. And the the last one, only include, overrides the functionalities of the the other two tags and transcludes only the portion of target text in the in the article. The built-in partial transclusion that MediaWiki has built uh, has this syntax, uh, up two open braces, uh, 
dos puntos. Columns. Columns. Okay. Uh, and the article name. Uh, what motivated us to do the, the current work? Uh, we have seen some problems, there's some things that, that make us uncomfortable. And uh, those things are that the transclusion are content excluding. Uh, that means that uh, uh, or you include a whole document or you exclude parts of the document and, and, and bring, uh, how do I say, uh, and bring long, long portions of text of the document or exclude long portion of, of text. Uh, that process is not natural for, for the end user to know when a transcription was made. And we wanted to, to help that uh, with uh, some analysis to the, the document. Well, well uh, we wanted to, to improve the process by doing three main things by creating a new tagging mechanism that, that makes the transclusion more flexible uh, uh, by helping uh, the process with visualization tools and uh, to create a visualization, visualization tool to analyze the, the content of, of, of the documents. Uh, why do we want this? Because uh, we believe in the free content and we believe that transclusion is, is key to, to take full advantage of them. Um, we wanted, as, as Ted Nelson did with the Xanadu project, we wanted to reduce the redundancy of information of the free, free content uh, no, free content based knowledge. And we wanted to, to give it a try. So, Okay, about the extension core, main, mainly it has three parts, a parser, a parser function, a tag extension, and several hooks we, we created. Uh, as Andrew uh, told us yesterday, uh, a tag extension ex extends the tagging functionalities of MediaWiki. A parser function extends the functionality of the built-in parser in MediaWiki and the hooks are um, uh, ways to intercept some events on, on MediaWiki. We did use uh, these these things. Um, we wanted to use uh, SQLite three model enabled in PHP, and we use processing and Java for for doing that. Uh, processing is a Java-based language for visualizations. And processing uh, GS is the, the JavaScript version of processing. The main syntax of the tag extension is the following. An open bra brace, uh, the transclusion, and a random generated ID um, within these this values. We wanted to do this because we have found some inconvenience with uh, if, if we just only create an attack. And the problem is, for example, if you want to tag this, this text and have overlapping tags, uh, the, result, the final result will be this tag takes all this text and this tag only takes this. Uh, that was uh, how we thought we, we can we can uh, solve this problem, and the the ID, the random generated ID, we it, we set it in a portable database. Uh, these are the the fields of the of the table we created. Uh, the random ID, the article name, the article source name, and the source article, uh, the, target, the target article name. And here, the, the text, the wiki text that was transcluded. Uh, why, will, why, we, 
why did we do this? Uh, because we didn't want to mess mess up with the the basic structure of, of MediaWiki. Uh, we thought uh, it was important that the, our extension was uh, at the least inva least invasive uh, way. Okay, the main uh, operations the, the parser function does uh, are the next. The syntax uh, is double braces, uh, dash, 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 thank you. And uh, here, uh, the ID, the uh, ID we want. Um, the function works this way. Uh, he retrieves the, the transclusion ID retrieves the data from the portable database, uh, creates a, a local instance of MediaWiki and loads the article by, by the name it has in the dat database. We make some parsing process uh, to, to extract the text from the, the, the target ar article and returns this, this parsing process returns a uh, raw wiki text that is parsing, parsed again by the by the parser and before to, to send it to the web browser. The three main hooks we have created are the next, the following, uh, one hook for the parsing function, uh, a hook for uh, the tagging extension and a hook for importing libraries and several operations. This, uh, we did this because um, we needed to import some, some libraries at, uh, like processing and et cetera. And we, uh, we used a hook to, to insert them in the, in the render output the moment before, a little, a little bit before the, the HTML was, was shown to the Here are some snapshots. Um, the, the extension uh, draws here uh, two, two buttons. One to the add new transclusion form, and the another one to manage the, the current transclusions. Uh, here is the, the add transclusion form. Uh, here we have the raw text of the target article. This text is all already loaded when we, when we want this. Uh, and the source article, we can find it. Uh, it, it loads the raw wiki text. And uh, we can select here and hit the transclude button, and etc. I will show you later how it works. The functions, uh, when you uh, push save, uh, via Ajax, we instance a uh, local media wiki variable load the art, both articles uh, and do the edits and save the of the two articles. Ah, uh, I have forgot. Uh, and we register the new transclusion in the portable database. For the edit, uh, the transclusion manager, uh, if you want to edit the a current transclusion, uh, we, you select the, the transclusion ID and he shows you the raw wiki text and, and you can uh, move the, the, the IDs, the created IDs to another part and, and hit save change. Uh, that is uh, done uh, by again creating a little instance of MediaWiki, load the, the article name and save. About the visualization metaphors, um, uh, we thought that a metaphor has to be as simplest as, as it, it can be. Um, and each metaphor must uh, explore a basic idea to what we want to represent. Um, we have done uh, two different visualizations uh, in processing. 
to analyze the to analyze and to give uh, to make it make the process a little bit easier. This is one snapshot of the the visualizations. Here is the section transclusion helper. It was designed this to to transclude to document to transclude uh, information from a source document to a target document. Uh, the documents have fixed size, uh, and uh, the sections the sections are uh, proportional to the amount of text it, it uh, they have. Uh, we have here a section preview that will show the, the a, a preview of the of the text from from the section we we want to transcribe. Uh, it allows several operations. Uh, for example, for the target document, uh, it allows to delete previous uh, previous uh, transcribed sections from from the source document, and uh, the source document has uh, uh, the capabilities of uh, have the sections move. This uh, is a snapshot, no, no, not so good snapshot of the wiki, the Wikipedia, Wikipedia Universe visualization. This is intended to to represent the relationships between the source documents, target documents, and categories. Um, the categories, uh, as I understand in, in Wikipedia, Wikipedia, are um, Using a DAG, a directed a cyclic graph. Uh, there is a super category, a root category, and and every category is um, every. It's, it's not like cyclic. It's, 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 but you should know that it's not like cyclic. Okay. It probably should be, but that's not a story. Yes, we 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 have based uh, the, the this on. on that idea, more or less. Cool. Um, for each category, each category has a father, father category until the root category is reached. Uh, for example, in this in this case, um, in music, uh, there are uh, several ways to arrive to this category or this article. In a high level representa representation. We used a map tree to display the DAG of categories containing all the the target articles. And we used a, a tag cloud, a word cloud, cloud, sorry, to display which sources compounds a, a given a given target. It, ha it has several uh, modes for operating. Uh, one of them is. Uh, we can we can have the uh, source to target uh, view point of view that is uh, show the show which target articles are uh, a source article is is, is is used and the other one is the target to source are mode that shows which sources are uh, uh, are part of a target article. Uh, okay, I am going now to show you. For example, we have here three different articles, three test articles. And uh, we are going to add a new transcription from here. Here, the, the row text is loaded. So we can, can find the other article and <coughs> select as, as much text as one wants. 
and includes includes the generated ID to the MP. If we reload the document, it will load up all the content. Okay, um, <coughs> now about the visualizations. In the visualization, uh, the text is uh, previewed uh, when, when the mouse is over in section. Uh, the operations that allows are uh, the inclusion of the, the transclusion of the, of the section to another one. It will reference uh, it will reference the, the part in the part section where it was loaded. And the other operation that allows is to delete the This is the yeah, okay. media universe visualization. Uh, these are cat categories. Uh, if one clicks uh, inside a category, it will show the, the, all the child categories and the articles that, are, that, that belongs to this, this category. The size of the of the category represents uh, the relationship between the number of, of articles and of sources and categories it has. For example, C4 must have must have a lot of and with the left mouse we can go in into the categories until we arrive to to a, a word cloud and uh, here S9 would be the, um, the source and T9 would be the, the target target that it uses. Uh, if we click on the on the word it would uh, open the original original source of the development. Our operation here uh, is uh, in target to source mode. If we press T, the directive will be uh, entering the, the other mode, the source target. And the same thing, we can navigate in, in the section until we arrive to the document we want. Uh, and we have also, if you press space, you can uh, navigate the list of categories. And articles. For example, if we um, click on what we started, it will be automatically it will be rich automatically. Okay, our 
three year work uh, will be uh, integrate the uh, problems, uh, integrate the visualizations with the extension, with the core program. Uh, in this moment, we have some compatibility issues uh, with some processing libraries, and we are solving uh, also uh, a problem with translating to to processing to processing GS. Uh, we hope that before 2012 we have a uh, uh, one our release. And there are some ideas we are thinking about this project, about uh, to extend the functionality of the section transmission helper, uh, maybe uh, to allow a uh, smaller unit. <coughs> we, we have thought first uh, to to represent the smallest unit as the section. Maybe we can go going further to paragraphs or phrases. We have to think about that. Because as, as smaller, uh, too small uh, unit may may change the conceptualization of the conversation. Uh, also, we this year uh, we are going to take an extension in a environment. Uh, in a, uh, in a video. And another idea is that we are not uh, likely to do it uh, right away, right, right immediately, but, but to think about the future is to extend the capabilities of extension to use it, uh, to use contents from other sources like, like Joomla or, or any, any open source. CMS. And uh, the intention of this extension would be to, to work in real time in a media with installation. Uh, we, wanted, we wanted to use the server to extract the PAG on, on the flight of the, of the media with installation. And uh, the idea to work with visualizations is to extend also the, the functionalities to a mobile environment. Okay, uh, questions, comments, or suggestions? Yeah, the, um, the randomized tag, you are using eight characters. You probably read me something bigger. Uh, uh, it is, uh, the, it's the random number. Yes. Yeah. There can be conditions. Yeah, bigger than that. But you can probably support about a million. Uh, yeah, well, we are. Uh, so, uh, as we are working now with a small amount of articles. Yeah. Maybe when we work with a large number of articles, we redesign the, the, the number of, of characters of the baby. Yeah. Can people choose their own tags? So, can, could somebody use an identifier? Uh, identifier uh, manually typing? Yeah. Not in this moment, but maybe. In This is sort of, just to get the basic framework for giving you this. Is this kind of a proposal to um, extend the tool to the operation this time? Um, well, because because it's a change in language, I think. You, I mean, if you put the tag in and say the language now, it won't do any of it. If you have the extension turned on, in yeah. that, in any particular media, media working installation, right. you can choose which, which extensions use. So this is a new extension they built, so anybody could be turned in theory. Now that you some play with this, this isn't necessarily being proposed that it will repeat itself. Is it a possibility? Uh, actually, there is uh, one extension called labeled section transclusion. Yes, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, that uh, extension has a problem, uh, two problems that, that we saw. That, uh, it, it doesn't use the, the, the whole, whole opening and closing tab, and uh, we have to manually uh, put the name on, on each block. And if uh, the, he said that if uh, two sections are uh, named equally, uh, the first section is only the two. What's going to happen if people cut and paste something with a transclusion? 
cut something without the constitution. Uh, what, what we are doing uh, is that uh, uh, it checks uh, the constitution. Yes, it checks on site. And uh, it, it has a closing or an opening track or another, another transcription will be removed. Why it is this necessary to use uh, this idea? Uh, why is it not sufficient to use the uh, article name and, uh, for example, the number of the number of answers in this article? Well, uh, it could be possible, but to uh, remove it, we want to give it a unique idea because. Um, I don't know if, if any can can be repeated in any identified. It's a hard question because if you use the article name, then if somebody then takes that chunk and puts in the in popular culture spun off article, you then broken it. Article name not an idea. We we say you would then increment the idea from that. How many levels deep can you go with the transcription? How many levels deep could you go? I mean, you showed that you could uh, enter yeah. an existing article. As we worked, uh, it has worked very well with several levels of transcription. If a uh, uh, parcel of uh, this function is discussed several times, it will be in the parcel. I would uh, like to see something like this uh, used to reference uh, for, for references because mm -hmm. uh, main references are uh, listed on many different articles and they're maintained more or less independently and some of them are not maintained so that there is some kind of coherence but many are manually maintained and uh, it would be nice to have one page for reference and then just to transcribe wherever that is used. And such a system could help facilitate. Mm -hmm. If probably it's practical. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, no more questions, suggestions, or? Okay, well, uh, another one on the. You said you want to extend that to include uh, non wiki sources. Uh, could you elaborate on that a bit? Uh, no, 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 no. And, uh, those are uh, projections. Okay. Ideas, yes. uh, like, like ideas mm -hmm. that for a new future. Okay.
PDF or Adobe Wiki, Facebook wikis um, as exports like PDF and recently OpenSim. And we also plan to support EPUB. Uh, we already support um, Open Document as well. Hello, my name is Salu. I am from Malayalam Wikipedia. Malayalam? Malayalam. Mm -hmm. And we had, last two years, we had offline version. Last year, we had an offline version of uh, Malayalam Wikipedia. Yeah. And this year, we had an offline version of Wikisource. Yes. Yeah. Alex, she's, she's going to tell about that. Right. So I'm looking forward to hearing about you. Am I right? Uh, my name is Emmanuel. I come from the French Wikipedia. I work on open teams and Wikipedia. Um, my name is Renaud. Um, um, I work, I help uh, Emmanuel with uh, the development of uh, QX and I've done a lot of deployments of offline. I think my name is Christian and I'm working on a mobile reader for the SIM format. Of on SIM, yeah, the SIM. And more to come. <laughs> I'm Gail and I'm basically here to learn about offline Wikipedia. I'm Jesse. I work at the Wikimedia Foundation, and I help with a lot of the stuff with offline, just kind of the whole, I guess, high level of thinking about how everything, all the pieces fit together. I'm Daniel Meachin, currently Wikimedian in residence on Open Science, but also interested in OLPC matters. And I'm currently writing a grant proposal which would include uh, having an offline version of both Wikipedia and some scholarly wiki content, especially on medical uh, topics. Where are you in residence? Uh, oh, with the Open Knowledge Foundation in Germany. I see. Uh, my name is Alex. I'm from uh, Kenya Wikipedia. So uh, I deal with uh, offline distribution from uh, English. Hello, my name is Ganesh. I'm from India. I'm a MediaWiki extensions developer. After attending the previous session on uh, offline Wikipedia, I decided to uh, extend my interest in this particular uh, field. I'm here. My name is Jaime. I'm working on the, on the transcription visualization extension. And I'm Okay, well, my name is Emmanuel, I think you already got that. Um, and I'm working with OpenSim more or less uh, accidentally, but uh, maybe I can show you some. I can answer the questions, and uh, especially for those who want to learn more about offline stuff. But uh, basically, my task is to bring the right people together and get things done, hopefully. A uh, short introduction into the into the whole process of what is Wikipedia offline actually. I mean, the vision of Wikipedia is to to share knowledge. That's what we are doing in projects already to bring together all the knowledge and store it in a central place. And, uh, but we also want to bring knowledge to people who don't have it. And this includes especially people who don't have internet access. So they can't just go to Wikipedia and look it up there. So it's, so that's why offline is one of the most important parts of our uh, Wikimedia strategy or Wikimedia vision to not only bring knowledge to those who have internet access. So we have on the one hand we have the projects where we get the content from. Then we have publishers. People who take the content from the project and put together a distribution. Uh, publisher also means uh, doing selection of content. For instance, uh, have a Wikipedia for schools with only topics relevant for schools and leave out all the maybe stuff which is not so good. Uh, or select specific versions of articles which are not vandalized, things like that. Uh, very important selection of images. Which images are important? Scale them down so they fit somehow in the storage format. 
and uh, and then you have to store the stuff. So that's why that's where OpenSIM comes in. We have a uh, a format that is basically an efficient storage format that's called SIM. And the OpenSIM project has implemented this format, has uh, written the documentation to make this format be a standard format. So, and, and there is a, a library which can be easily used for people in their own software. So it can be used by publishers to actually get their stuff after they have done the selection work in the, in the project, which is quite a different, difficult topic uh, to, to bring it into a format that can be used on uh, different platforms with different applications uh, by different people. That's a SIM format. And, uh, and on the other side we have the, the actual readers, the people who will use the content, the users. And here are uh, here exist different projects which provide readers which can read data which is in the SIM file format. Kilix has been named, for instance, it's, it's a, a reader software that runs on ordinary PCs, on Linux, Windows, Mac OS, uh, maybe even soon on the old PC, for instance. Uh, and. Uh, Christian's uh, application which runs on mobile phones, which is Wiki on board. And there are some more of them, but these are, I, I could say, the most, uh, the mo the, the most known ones. Um, the SIM format can also be uh, implemented by other people. That's why we documented it. And there is currently an ongoing project to, for instance, to uh, write a new, new implementation of the SIM format in Java. So that's uh, basically interesting for people uh, who are active in this field, creating reader applications. If they uh, want to have the library in Java, they can use this once it's ready. And so the SIMlib is actually part of, the, of these readers. And then we have, um, and then we have PDFRes on this side with the collection extension. The collection extension is installed on the Wikimedia projects as part of MediaWiki. And the PDFRes people are using their own render software, etc. And they have integrated the SIM library to be able to export the stuff once it's collected from the project, rendered into the SIM file format. That's PySIM, which is also open source software. So this is somewhere here in between. Um, so these are the, the different fields we are actually talking about. Uh, I could go more deeper into, for instance, Behind Publisher, there is also the, the topic about how to deploy into things, so how to bring it, for instance, to Africa or to, to, to users, etc. Um, but I'll leave this out a bit. So this is basically the tool chain we have, or the things we have to talk about. And uh, so Wikipedia Offline has different fields of expertise. So, I am involved here in the storage format. I don't know that much about article selection and, uh, and all the challenges of article selection. I think Emmanuel can talk about this because he has done for his Kivik software, has also created a lot of SIM files and has uh, written scripts on how to select articles, how to scale them on images, etc. Um, yes, that's basically it. Um, I think uh, we shouldn't talk too much about open and the technical stuff. We're more here to actually do the things. So. Um, okay, who want to start? Jesse. I can. Yeah. Sure. Um, I think 
Do you want to use the projector? I can, or I can just, it doesn't matter that much. I can just talk through. But
create a book or content package on just medical information or something, you could go through and select those certain articles that you're interested in and package those together and then download that um, in a couple different ways, one of which is now the, the Zen format, and that's actually what's the new feature. It could also be PDF, etc. Um, and then there's the, then there's like the more detailed way of creating these content packages, which are these more specialized versions of your offline Wikipedia. So the one that is talked about probably most frequently is Wikipedia for schools, which is the Wikipedia in English, which boils down the you know three and a half million articles to. 6,000 articles that are supposed to be most relevant to a, a child or a student in the um, secondary school. Yeah? When was the last time that we could be at school was updated? 2009 was the last update, and we keep being told that there's going to be another one We're coming. Yeah. It's, like, it's like five and a half thousand, so like 5,500. Um, the problem, but one of the problems with it is it's hard to update, so it's uh, it can be up to date. The other is that it's um, when I say articles most relevant to students, it has to revolve around some sort of curriculum, and that happens to be the British curriculum. So um, Alex has talked some about his, their experiences using this in Kenya, and it's, you know, it lacks a lot of articles around African history that are obviously quite relevant to a student in Kenya, which maybe aren't quite so relevant to a student in history. So when it was produced, it was on a CD originally, wasn't it? Well, that was one way, yeah. Okay. So now DVDs are pretty ubiquitous. Maybe instead of uh, increasing it to have, you know, you can have your African centric articles, etc., etc. Yeah, it definitely has space. And they said, in, uh, this is an area that's totally open. To, like when I've talked to the guys that have developed it, they're like, yeah, if we had a list of 200 articles that the Kenyans want on it, sure, send them our way, and we'll put it in the next package. So those are things that are definitely doable. Um, Right now, and then Wikipedia 1.0, there's a couple different languages have done this and are doing it. Um, Spanish and English are both done, and a lot of languages have it going on. But that's um, a bigger version, so it's like 40,000 articles in the English Wikipedia. So, but it excludes such categories as you know, pornography, just broadly, just because it's probably not necessary to have that, and maybe just an easy category to exclude um, if you're going to a school. So. Right now, the tools to develop those things, obviously it's kind of difficult because you have to choose which, you know, which revision of the article you want to include, or it's not, un, like doesn't have vandalism, it's most, I guess the most trusted is usually how people refer to it as. Um, and the tools to do that for the Wikipedia 1.0 at least are on the tools server right now. But we actually have a Google Summer of Code project going on currently, which um, is really exciting, and it's a, a guy in India who's working on it, and he's helping move the tools that are on the tool server as MediaWiki extensions. So they're actually will be within um, MediaWiki, so other people could use them and start to, you know, use the manual or the automatic processes for rating, rating article importance and rating article quality, those sorts of things. So stay tuned about information regarding that. Um, What's the name of the guy? UV Panda, is that what I'm saying, Greg? Right? Yeah. Um, so I think there's there's links to that on the Meta Wiki too. The, uh, uh, the project pages are on. I forget which what they're on. I have one. But yeah, there's links there's links to them in the offline projects pages generally. Yeah. I have a question to suggest the connection problem. In Polish, we have we did that in the edition of 2004, mm -hmm. and one of the issues was was marking was sure about revisions as you're saying and some people like argue for introduction of like revisions extension uh, for its purpose. For its purpose. That's actually what like revisions is meant to do. And uh, somehow it never works. I mean nobody is using it this way. I'm German independent I don't think so either. Why? Do you know why? Do you ever evaluate it this for this purpose? I don't know. To mark stable revisions and to use them later for offline. Yeah. Like 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 because that's my, one of the major revisions for your problem. Yeah. Find out which version is good enough to explain to the I'm not sure why that one didn't take off at the remains right next to the Yeah, please. Flight revisions is great when you need a continuous real time estimate of trusted revisions. If you're making an offline snapshot once every three or six months, you can afford to do it better. So flight revisions is okay. It took us like really long, more than three months to collect. collect so, 
I mean, it, it, and it, the reason that English and French aren't using flag revisions is simply that they're using the Wikitrust model, which is a much stronger version of the same thing. But if, if Wikitrust doesn't work in your language yet, then flag revisions is good. Yeah. So we, yeah, Wikitrust is the way that they is a uh, is really awesome way of kind of going back through the history of the files and choosing which versions are the most trusted or presumably the ones without any the ones without vandalism that like sure that don't have vandalism. Um, and it's safe, and it's safe, and some of these packages like the schools stuff. A lot of those articles are actually pretty stagnant, like they're pretty well developed and they're not edited a ton anyway, so they don't necessarily change that much. Some of them do, obviously. Um, yeah, so uh, we talked a little bit about this, about so the different storage options through that collection extension. So there's a PDF that has been available for quite a while now. So you could print a book out of a Wikipedia, a set of Wikipedia articles. Um, the Zim download option is, is a newer one available. And then one that we that's really exciting that, again, I go through a lot on your plate, but hopefully you'll talk about this more. Maybe now, actually, but I don't know if we we'll to do it later now. But it was one that was being worked on is be able to download an EPUB and have that. Like, like, I mean, for EPUB, I think, into a Wikipedia page? Just one way. Are you working on the other way? Yeah. We're working just on the export. Ah. Um, but that could be, I mean, a really cool way of extending, I don't know, there's been a lot of research recently on e-readers and how those have been jumping into kind of the leapfrog effect, right, of a lot of communities throughout Africa specifically is where I've heard the research, but other areas presumably as well, um, where they're getting different e-readers, so it'd be wonderful if we have the sorts of capabilities to load our content onto those. Um, QX, do QX people want to speak up about this stuff? Emmanuel, Bruno? What is the vision exactly? I don't know, do you want to give an overview of QX kind of what it is and what you're planning yes, on so moving? Um, in the few million, millions, I guess, so pretty quickly. Yeah. Uh, yes, this is, oops, this is really an application, firstly, uh, so for personal computers. So it works now with uh, uh, the three main uh, operating systems. Um, this is really a pretty uh, simple software. It reads a, read a file and display uh, an article, and you have also a full text search engine inside. So we try to keep it simple, but at the same time, <coughs> We are always improving uh, the usability of the software uh, since uh, the end of the foundation. Uh, this is uh, Do you want to do the, app, the new one if you want to show? Yeah, uh, yeah so I don't think we have time for this. Yes, I think it, it's okay. important to keep it <laughs> big. So I think the, the main value of, of Kiwi is that uh, the first the format, the format is really efficient, really fast, it does not need resources. Uh, CPU resources to, to read it, uh, and uh, you you can uh, you can assure a pretty uh, nice uh, uh, rendering. So, like you can see, uh, this is almost exactly the same as what is on Wikipedia. And if there is something change on Wikipedia, it will be there Are automatically. Are you using some some uh, renderers on the browser? No, 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 no. This is yes. This is a HTML. Under engine, so and the HTML is more or less exactly the same what what is rendered by MediaWiki. So and a new feature is uh, the content manager. So you can inside Kiwix uh, get a list of content, so team file, download them directly and and on them. Yeah. Can you edit through Kiwix? Can you edit? Can you edit Wikipedia through no. Only a read only view. Uh, <laughs> offline edit is a big topic. I think we are all we have all interest uh, about that, but this is maybe a little bit early to really do something in, in, in this direction. It's, it's welcome uh, any many wiki installation or only Wikipedia? See, this is a reader and this reads sim file. So this has technologically nothing to do with media itself. 
but I think you speak about the gateway, how to move my content on my instance from MetaWiki to Team, and this is possible, so we do it, but this is not so easy, and we will work to make it easy, and I hope next year we will have solutions that everyone running MetaWiki instance will be able quickly and easily to generate the corresponding Team file. Basically, the simple format allows you to stick in whatever kind of HTML stuff and everything you need around. So, also the JavaScript files, the images, CSS, whatever you want, whatever you like. It's a bit like a zip file, but it's made for fast access to the articles. Uh, it has a category system built in and uh, a templating built in. Uh, well, these two things uh, we actually need help with because they are defined in the standard but not fully implemented yet in the library. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, we, we have seen it working on very, very small embedded devices. So it's, uh, it's optimized for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah um, and I believe I've heard that the whole key would say is one great for information. I have the link up there to the volunteers if you guys want to participate. And there's some different things that um, you can use help on going forward. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been great. And it's going on too. Um, so, one of, so I just want to say like in terms of distribution, how we're, how this is actually going out, I, these are just from conversations I have. All of these apps are from places around the world that have some sort of version of Wikipedia offline. And it's really exciting because it's a lot of different places. Um, so this is through several different partnerships, um, but obviously lacks a lot of things. So like these are just ones that I've had work in progress totally. And I sent out this link to a couple of mailing lists, but got very little traction. So maybe now we can get some of India, for example, added on today. Um, and oh, you see too, that's a lot that they could be added on here too. Um, but yeah, it's like it's really exciting because we've gone a lot of places, and there's obviously a lot more places that we can go to um, as well. Oh yeah, mailing list. We don't have a need to add more going through. You have an option. Oh yeah. Is this an editable map? Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. it's open. So yeah, I need to add. I mean, these are just like so a couple of the organizations I've talked to that are like, oh yeah, we like created our own map, or oh yeah, and so I just kind of embedded them, or meshed them together, hand added my own. Awesome. Yep, editable map. The link to this is also on the offline projects pages. Um. So yeah, so there's a lot of different ways to participate, and people can bring up some of these things. Um, we do need this special, sort of specialized content, so. Um, location specific content. So like we've, I talked about a little bit adding articles about Kenya or relevant articles about India, whatever. Both of these things have been requested by different education institutions that were like, we want your stuff and we'll take what you have, but it would be really much better if we could actually have another 300 articles about Africa or about India. Also language specific things. So we have the Wikipedia for schools in English, um, which is great. And it would be great to have something like this in some other languages. And so these are some of the ones that conversations that I've had of groups that have wanted it. So just to give an example um, about how like how much this stuff is taking traction, I was in Brazil at the end of June and we met with um, Positivo, which is the largest manufacturer there of low cost computers. Um, and they sell they sell tons of them to the government for education and institutions. But they also sell about eight million through retail. And so these are a lot of the computers that are the first personal computers owned by um, this, this like rising middle class of Brazilians. And they have, they were like, we, w we would love to have Kiwix in, oh, um, off this offline Wikipedia just pre-install on all of our computers before we sell them and before we distribute them. Um, can you just get us a version of Portuguese Wikipedia for in, for in this like Wikipedia for schools version? So um, we have all the information obviously already and like we built the the project exists, as Manuel uh, talked about earlier. It's just a matter of filtering it and boiling it down to a, a reasonable size that could be on these computers. And then we don't even have to do anything. They just, they're the ones selling the computers and it just will be in the hands of people, which um, is really cool. And there's other, there's been other computer manufacturers as well with really large distributions that have asked about that sort of thing. Um, 
which is which is really awesome and encouraging to all of the work that everyone has been doing here. Um, so there's a lot of volunteer options if you do want to participate more. Yeah, so this doesn't even touch on the development side of things, which um, yeah, he was in Open Zoom, both have a lot of, and uh, I'm sure some of the other projects have lots of areas you can participate there. But there's other things like writing how-to guides, how to download, like how to even download the material, how to approach a school about and about installing a sort of set of software, how to um, actually use it in your a school, like in a classroom setting, whatever. There's um, publicity for it, distribution help, or even fundraising, thinking about how your chapter, how your community can help with this sort of, um, with helping fund the distribution of these things. That's the other way. Um, but yeah, I think, sorry if I took up most of the time. I would love, other people should, can, and should jump in. I have one Yeah. I've thought of selling the solution for other system people's safety source and dictionary. So those can be all put into the OpenZip format now. Um, is that what you're asking? Yeah. So some of them have. There's some of files we have. The problem, see, we know, you know that we recently released the Malayan wiki source thing. But yeah. one of the issues we face is how we will present these drawings. We cannot uh, present at all because it's on the wiki page. So it is one. Uh, it is not good. We just know how to read it like that. So we should, we tried different way of displaying like creating a book structure and all. So but then how we, uh, the, from foundations part, how we thought about this type of display and this then we reach out for the uh, offline solutions. Yeah, we've talked about it. <laughs> I go and I've talked about this um, we, uh, about the rendering of the different languages. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe I can show the Maya on the piece of Yeah, you want to? You have the CDM? Or you can get to it. Yeah. You're, you're offline right now. Oh. <laughs> Officially, the officially the session ends in one minute, but you have still time to be here. It's a good idea. You know, you know, with the equator device, you know, this I think was pretty cheap. You work for which is I don't think it's it. It's not zip compatible. But which one? The leaky reader. Yeah, there are a small thing. Yeah, and they developed it while we just developed it. Yeah, but the question is because it's programmable, it's a hackable device, because you can use format. Did anyone try to implement it, bring it in? Do you hear about this project? We, we, we tried to get in touch with the people, but never succeeded. Okay. Because I'm a form factor, so I was thinking about writing new software for this. That's why be supporting with this Zim would be excellent. Job. Especially as they said, it would be updatable. We don't know the format of that. I've never seen an update, actually. No, because then we could have downloaded it and it would have the format. You can put it to your own firmware from the way and write it from the front. So it is hackable. It's not a good hack. It has SD cards. That's a great idea. So I'm just thinking that maybe. I have a question. 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 They are made for really tiny Linux devices, and they work. Okay. 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 Uh, last two months before Malayalam Wiki community has released an offline version of Wiki So what we are done is uh, we selected some good books from Malayalam Wiki Schools. It means we completed works and released uh, it an offline release. We get an online reference, so the offline series can be just found out. So that is a CD, a CD is offered. So you can see that when, actually when we release the CD, we face one challenge of how we should display this.
display the content using different schemes. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's, po that's possible. Yeah. Uh, you can put them into the sim files. As, as I said, you can put inside a sim file basically everything. Mm -hmm. It has a mind type. Uh, uh, um, each article or each result content that is in the sim file has has a mind type. Um, Done by the same people who actually wrote the application, 
And then after a while, it didn't support it anymore, and so the readers are actually more or less useless. Uh, except you are interested in having Wikipedia on your iPhone, which is from 2006. And um, I have actually asked the same question uh, to Eric as well. And uh, I mean, what I can say is, in, at least in 2009, there were people who, are, who had to pay money to get it done, were looking into the issue, and they came up with something new. And I think Emmanuel has an uh, answer. Uh, well, uh, I think this is not exactly the reason. Uh, I don't think it's uh, really exactly what you just said about the EPUB. Because the EPUB is a definitely, I mean, it's not compressed in the same way as the open source, that the same format is, and the same format is way more efficient than the EPUB. Because the objective, one of the objectives of the EPUB was that it would run on something that would have almost no CPU or nothing. And the same format, Speed, 
file size yeah, because I don't know anything about it. I also don't know what kind of markup EPUB uses. I mean, Zilp uses the original HTML. You can stick whatever. Uh, I mean, you can stick whatever website in it. It doesn't even have to be a video wiki or something. EPUB is also working with HTML. Ah, okay. So then there is And the categories? Uh, I do not, I don't think, uh, I'm not a specialist of people, but I don't think there are categories. I mean, so what what thing you could propose, yeah, yeah, so one thing you could propose, this is a big EPUB development group, you could propose Zen features for inclusion in EPUB. And if they're able to yes. include them, then you could merge with them. Yes. yes. So, I, just one, I, I just wanted to mention one thing since we talked about, uh, since we talked about reading and writing. Uh, Rob Oxhorn has this project to have a uh, an offline wiki editor, and he'd love to get it to work with Zen formats. Right now, he's working with raw HTML and he's building his own indexes. But he looked into Zen and he said, "Yeah, that would be cool." Uh, since the the editor requires uh, indexing wiki text, rather than, it keeps the wiki text to be article rather than the HTML, because it's hard to track. The idea is Hyperopia will let you edit a given article and then push the chain and that. That's actually possible. First of all, uh, in the SIM file, each article has a revision attribute. So you can store the actual revision when you create the SIM file. Mm -hmm. And as I said, we have the different uh, namespaces. So you could just use one of the three namespaces and add the wiki, wiki marker for this article. So the style, of course, will be a bit bigger. A bit yeah. bigger. But uh, it will, for like a Kimix, will read the file and will just ignore that data. It's, it doesn't see it at all. And this special reader, we could even more combine it in the standard and say, if your SIM file stores wiki text, I would make it optional, then it has to be in the namespace whatever. Yeah. So that if I would read the one support of the write a SIM application that would take those things and put it in a jar and result of it. So if your revision is the latest one and you can add it yeah. on it, then you sync it to the Metabiki. If it's not and you have conflict, like edit conflict, or this is, uh, that's what I was working on. That's what I was working on. So same question. application between Zim, when, when you put the Wikitex in Zim, yeah. then sync application is of course non-trivial, but we at least have basis for it. But this is not the Zim thing. Yeah. Ah, but could be. The, the, I mean, the Zim thing, yeah, the is just a format. It doesn't, doesn't matter in which format you store it. Yeah. So the soup problem will always be there. Yeah, it's so you have to solve it. You need to know on which revision the Wikitex was based on, where the added changes, mm -hmm. and that's it. Yeah. Like pure revision or revision plus changes, because we don't know. I mean, we, we have talked about this uh, for a lot. There was also the idea to just allow comments on an article that you can soon back to for instance, to a discussion page, because yeah. this is quite easy to do. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so the, the request from this community developer is to get open Zen library support in Python. In Python? Yeah, yeah that's what Python is. We great. That's what the, the, the PMRS people already done. Well, so that's easy. They have a Python uh, binding. Well, it's, it's not easy. And we can develop the robot uh, around the uh, C library. <laughs> Actually, I think you, you have to increase the usability for developers installing the open SIM libraries because this is kind of why file bug report whatever. I don't I, actually I don't know uh, any issues around this. So. Yeah, okay, you so yeah. really should file bug reports for that. Okay, you have to compile a lot of stuff in order to get the SIM library uh, working. Yeah. Lots of dependencies, you mean? Yeah, or I only know of two actually. But it's somehow how much you. Huh? I didn't try to make all these. You need L7A? That's obvious. What would you need? L7A2? Okay. Or oh, XF? That's the format one. But that's obvious because it's. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, the, it's a compression thing. And you need CSX tools, which is just another C library. So yeah. You shouldn't have, have uh, dependencies. Do, uh, do you know what the, the 
Pedro, or I didn't I'll hide from you. Yes. I cannot. Okay. Uh, I mean, I would have to, I mean, you can download it from the Git repository. I don't have my laptop on me. Uh, oh, it's Python, so you don't have to compile but, it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, I mean, please, you know, fork this, fork this repository and press it down. <coughs> Right, right now there isn't a default set of Hyperopia collections to download. Ideally they would be these, something like these zip files would be the book So uh, that's the only trick. There is a there is a test button that you can start testing there. Uh, I could do a demo of the EPUB project I please do it. Yeah, people can go to any but I don't see it. Uh, one important thing is we need more people getting involved. Actually, everyone has a so important that we are only going to see it, but we have only one developer in the organization. And we still have two it's C, the more features key special value letter is C plus uh, plus that's why it's kept one of the results. Yeah, I know. Which two important features? Secret business. Category handling and templating. Both are already defined. And they are part of them are also already as a prototype implemented, but they need to be finished. The code needs to be finished. Ouch. And our what's the how how many hours of work is it? How many hours of work do you think there is? I can't say this, I'm not the developer. Uh, uh, but we are we are talking about this now. We will talk about this. Unfortunately, the developer is now going to summer vacation, so we couldn't come here to be here. This is a summer vacation. Almost. No, he has family and so much. And he lives far away from from relatives. He lives in Germany. He's from Finland, so he's in Finland now with his family. And, uh, But we will, we will, uh, we have, we will have discussions about this. So because yeah. people will help us uh, to define how much work it is and what are the actual requirements for a person who can do it. And then we also will try to find a, a contractor. I would be really happy if we could find more people supporting us. Not necessarily only coding. But I think one we have the trend one thing which would and so I know that there's always the plan to have release one or zero something a bit easier, but I think to have more developers and more attention we would really need this automatic dump. Yeah, we need the automatic dump. So it's not that best quality, but also if you're excessive. We need the automatic dump. Yeah, there is a developer. Yeah, because for example, nobody will buy any reader for iPhone or something because it's not interesting to have the dump switch. The camera does handle which is a lot of work, and they can't just use it on the mobile because it doesn't make sense with the pictures. And now if we have put just integrated in media with it, every six months it's done with this picture, without pictures, there's one picture by asynchronous conversion for all many languages, this would be really good because then I think many people to start programming in viewers for a different platforms. Do you think six months is enough? Every six months is good? Sure, okay. actually a year is now, it's not sure. Yeah. 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 Sorry if I interrupt here. Sorry if I interrupt you. I would like to continue the discussion later outside. We will have a short demonstration of it from Heiko. But then we should leave the room to give to give it to the next presenters, which are already here waiting. I just created an email file and um, I don't think that Jesse can open it on your computer so whoever is interested in the file just tell Jesse and she will email it to you. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, I love well, I might Jar. I would like to see Jar. a comparison in this file size. Can you just go back and change a zoom file export of the same file? Just save it on, on in the home directory and Yes, just export two files with the same articles. 